H-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with old Johnny. <laughs> This morning I was looking over the book reviews of the Sunday paper and reading the lists of bestsellers. And that just happened to give me an idea. I'd like to recommend to you a grand bestseller in the field of desserts. A dessert that's not only currently popular, but has been on the bestseller list for years and years. The author is General Foods and the name is Jell-O. And ladies and gentlemen, that's a mighty important thing because it's a trademark. It's the property of General Foods. And it tells you here is the real thing, the one and only Jell-O. If you hear any other gelatin dessert called Jell-O, you'll know that's incorrect, for there is no other. So when you buy, don't accept any substitutes. Ask for Jell-O by name, and you can be sure every time of getting your favorite dessert. You can be sure of enjoying that delicious, extra-rich flavor, so full-bodied and tempting as inviting as a fresh, ripe fruit. Look for those big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O, your password to pleasure. That was old Johnny played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Oh, Jack, Jack. Yes, Don? Is your tooth still bothering you? Uh, just a little, Don, but it'll be all right. Go ahead. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you ought to see a dentist, Jack. A toothache can be very annoying. I know, Don, but I'm all right. Go ahead and introduce him. And now, ladies and gentlemen, but Jack, it must hurt. Don't you feel any jumping pains? Only when you mention it. <laughs> now, please, go ahead and introduce me. All right, Jack. Goodness. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we bring you a man who, despite a severe toothache, feels that the show must go on. That brave little soldier, that grand old trooper, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Ooh, that tooth. Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking through a murderous molar. <laughs> well, Don, here it is Sunday again, and we're back on the old merry-go-round. Time sure flies, doesn't it? Uh, it certainly does. You know, Jack, it doesn't seem possible that we've been on the air six times already this season. No, it doesn't. No kidding, fellas. Have we been on the air six weeks? Yes, Phil, and they sure roll around fast, don't they? Yeah, it seems like I hardly get one paycheck till I have to start battling for the next one. Oh, you do? Well, listen, Phil, if I were you, I'd take my paychecks any way I could get them. Yeah? Yeah, and I wouldn't complain about your job. You're very lucky. You know, in musical circles, they refer to you as Horseshoe Harris. <laughs> <laughs> and that goes for your boys, too, those 17 rabbit's feet. <laughs> so let uh, well enough alone. Now, uh, what was I talking about, Don? You were complaining about your tooth. I was not. I was talking about how the weeks fly by. You know, Don, sometimes it amazes me how I can prepare all the ideas that go into this program in seven days. It's really quite a grind. I can appreciate that, Jack. It must be pretty tough. Oh, it is, Don. Tis. <laughs> I don't know what you're squawking about. Look at all the band numbers I gotta rehearse and get ready. It's no cinch, believe me. Phil, you mean to tell me you actually prepare your numbers ahead of time? <laughs> Those voodoo valses? <laughs> Sure, we gotta have everything right up to snuff. We gotta live up to our slogan, you know. Your slogan? Oh, you've got a slogan now. Sure, listen to this. If it's a Harris selection, it's sheer perfection. Well, well, say, that's very good. I got another one we use on the road. Get this. If it's a Harris number, you'll never slumber. I agree with you there. <laughs> and Phil, if you can stand one more slogan, it goes like this. If it's a Harris melody, it's sure to smellody. <laughs> And I don't mean Christmas night. <laughs> now, where was I? What were we talking about, Don? You were complaining about your tooth. I was not. You know, Don, there are times... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Say, what's the matter with your face? My face? Yeah, one cheek isn't sunk in anymore. <laughs> oh, that's my tooth. My left cheek is swollen a little. A little? You look like a squirrel that's all set for a long winter. <laughs> 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 
Oh, I do. My goodness, Jack, that tooth's been bothering you all week. Why don't you have it pulled out? Oh, the pain will go away. Say, fellas... I never saw anybody so scared of a dentist. I'm not scared of a dentist. That tooth is loose and it'll probably fall out by itself. You mean like that thin stuff on top of your head? <laughs> I mean, don't worry about me. I'll get this tooth fixed my own way. Say, Jackson. What? One of my piano players don't like you. He'll be glad to knock it out. Oh, you mean that little squirt sitting over there? Why, I'll... No, the other one. Oh. Oh, hello, Butch. I didn't see you. <laughs> now go sit down. He won't hit you, Jack, with those glasses on. She's right, Jack. It's against the law to hit anybody that's wearing glasses. Listen, Don, I said that to a big guy one day, and he took my glasses off, punched me in the nose, and put them back on again. <laughs> so don't tell me. What were you doing in the meantime? Jack was explaining the law to him. <laughs> Yes, he'll know better next time. <laughs> Say, Phil, how about playing a number? My tooth is acting up again. I want to put a couple of drops in it. Okay. What kind of toothache drops are you using, Jack? I don't know. It's something Rochester makes. I think it's chloroform and white mule. <laughs> it does the trick, though. Go ahead, Phil. Play something. All right, Jackson. Get ready, boys. And remember, folks, if it's a Harris selection, it's sheer perfection. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's that for? Oh, you weren't here, Mary, but Phil has suddenly become slogan conscious uh, Give her that other one, Phil Well, here's one you haven't even heard yet When Smiling Harris plays a tune Every month in the year is June oh. How's that, Mary? Wow, that's corn that isn't even ripe yet <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one Say, Jack What? If Vaudeville ever comes back, I got a swell slogan for you Never mind What is it, Mary? When Benny plays on his violin, you can shoot him down and it ain't no sin. <laughs> Mary, we weren't talking about my violin, so that laugh doesn't count. Now, let's forget our poetry contest and get along with the show. Play something, Phil. Now, wait a minute, Jack. You've all had your little poetry. How about giving me a chance? Okay, Don, let's hear your contribution, said he with a look of innocence in his baby blue eyes. Take it, Don. All right, but I want you to help me, Jack. Now, you start me off with, hello, Joe. Okay. Hello, Joe. What do you know? I just got back from the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> Did you buy a box of you know what? Yes, sir. -y. That's what I got. What's in this box that's so delish? I bet you wish you had a dish. Can this be jello that you mean? Yuck, yuck, yuck. I'm Madam Queen. <laughs> Mary, you spoiled the whole thing. That last line didn't make sense. All right, send me to Siberia. There's <laughs> <laughs> nothing to get funny about. Hey, genius. What? Play something. And that guy answers to anything if you just put a hay in front of it. <laughs> Stop is Wonderful, played by Phil Harris, who can now tear up his slogans. 
<laughs> a hair of selection is sheer perfection. Oh, Maharaja. <laughs> Uh, and now, folks... Wait a minute, Jack. Are you insinuating that number was inharmonious? What's that? Inharmonious, mediocre, lacking in finesse and euphony. Why, Phil? Well, that's today's work. Good night, all. <laughs> <laughs> Rosalind, come back here. <laughs> what a guy. He learns four big words and he's all in. And now, folks, before we say, where's Dennis? I saw him downstairs with his mother just before the broadcast. I did, too. And old Jack, is Mrs. Day mad at you? Mad at me? Why, we got to be very good friends at my Halloween party. Well, she was home last Sunday listening to our program, and she heard you call her a pest. I didn't call her a pest. I said she needed a rest. Well, she got it, so watch out. <laughs> oh, Mary, Mrs. Day is much too broad-minded to be upset about a little joke. And now, folks, however, Mary, I wouldn't mention anything about it when she comes in. You know. Yeah, I know. You know how it is. Yeah, I know how it is. Yeah. And now, folks... And now, folks... Mary, let me alone. <laughs> and now, folks, uh, following our success last week with our version of The Women, tonight we are going to... Oh, boy, wasn't I marvelous in that play? What? <laughs> Didn't I give a terrific performance? <laughs> yes, Phil, you were sensational. Would you consider a $1,000 raise in salary? I feel guilty having you at these prices. That's a deal, shake. Get away or I'll break your arm. <laughs> Terrific performance. Anyway, folks, as I was saying, uh, following our success last week with the women, uh, tonight we are going to offer... Uh-oh, look who's coming. Well, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. And your mother's with you. Well, well, this is nice. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mrs. Day. How do you do? Hmm. <laughs> Well, you're looking very good, Lucretia. Thanks, and you will please refer to me as Mrs. Day. Well. It is now 20 degrees cooler inside. <laughs> Mary. Well, Dennis, I'm glad you're here, and I know you have a lovely song prepared for us tonight. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes, I am. Say, Mr. Benny, what's the matter with your jaw? Did someone hit you? Uh, no, Dennis, I have a bad toothache. You know, Mrs. Day, it hurts like the dickens. It's... Really a miracle that I can be funny tonight. <laughs> you were very funny last week. Very funny. Oh, did you enjoy the show? Yes, especially the part where you called me a pest. It was such a brilliant remark. Why, Mrs. Day, I called you a pest? Yes, you did. On the radio? Yes, on the radio. On my program? It wasn't Duke Ginsburg and his happy Hawaiian. <laughs> Very quiet. Now, look, Mrs. Day, it may have sounded like I called you a pest, but this darn tooth of mine slurs my words. Been bothering me all week. Your tooth, huh? Yes, you can see for yourself. Look, uh, it's the big one right here. The one on the urn, sir? Oh, that does look pretty bad. Yeah, it hurts like the Dickens. Hey, Jack, let me hear you say your name. What? Let me hear you say your name. Jerk Vernie. That's what I thought. <laughs> Mary, I've got a toothache. I prefer a little sympathy to ridicule. Well, then, for heaven's sake, stop complaining and go to a dentist. I'm not going to a dentist. What's the matter? Are you afraid? No, I'm not afraid. Well, there's only one other reason, so let's take up a collection. <laughs> Phil, that won't be necessary. It's the first time I ever had trouble with a tooth. I haven't been to a dentist since I was 10 years old. Don't tell me you made those uppers yourself. <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't make those uppers myself. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Jack, I don't want to be an alarmist, but I think you ought to do something about that tooth. It might lead to serious consequences. Well, gee, it does hurt, but I don't know who to go to. I know a good dentist, Jack, and he's just two blocks from here. Come on, let's go. Oh, don't pull me. Go ahead, Jack. We'll take care of the program. Sure, I got some swell jokes, and I'm dying to tell them. No, oh, I know your jokes, Phil. Oh, waiter, have you got frog's legs? No, I always walk this way. <laughs> That's nice, smart material <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go Okay Well, so long, fellas well, so, so long, Jack okay. All right, Dennis, you can go ahead with your song now uh, What's it going to be? I'm going to sing He's going to sing a very popular number called A Man in His Dream From that From Paramount... that Paramount picture, The Star Baker Starring Bing Crosby, I got that in Dennis, don't be such a ham Now sing Always stop. 
are my imagination. Sometimes it borders on fantasy, and sometimes I find visions flash through my mind, close to reality. Night, a soft guitar, a hidden lane, a moon, and here and there a star. For a man and his dream Night, a cricket's cry A whispered word, a kiss And now and then a sigh For a man and his dream And their eyes when they meet seem to say it's a blind and their heart proudly beat to a tune that is older than time night must fade away and yet it leaves a love so all the world will say there's a man and his dream And their eyes, when they meet Seem to say it's sublime And their hearts proudly beat To a tune that is older than time Night must fade away and yet it leaves a love So all the world will say There's a man And his dream Mary, my tooth doesn't seem to be bothering me now. I think I'll let it go till some other time. You'll do nothing of the kind. Here's the dentist's office. Well, I'd rather wait until... He's a swell dentist, Jack. Look at that sign. Where? Right there. Dr. Frank Nelson. Bridges like San Francisco. <laughs> well, he's not very modest, is he? Well, let's go in. Say, he's got a nice office, hasn't he? Yeah. How do you do, sir? Uh, how do you do? I'd like to see Dr. Nelson. The doctor is busy with a patient right now. Would you care to wait? Why, yes. Well, you know what you're doing, I guess. <laughs> what? I'll tell the doctor you're here. Please be seated. Uh, what's that, miss? Is that a drill? Yes, the doctor is working on a patient. Some fun, hey, kid? <laughs> Say, Mary, are you, are you sure this dentist is all right? Of course he's all right. Do I look worried? No, but then I'm the one with the toothache. I'm not worried, Mary, but I just want to make sure that... <laughs> well, let's scram. <laughs> I hate this waiting. Come on, Mary. Jack, come here. Dr. Nelson is absolutely painless. <laughs> painless? What was that, six o'clock? <laughs> I'm getting out of here. That'll be all for today, Mrs. Stewart. When will I see you again? You should live so long. <laughs> hmm. Well, young man, are you waiting to see me? Yes, but I... Your name, please. Uh, Benny. I'm Jack Benny, the actor. Sorry, we don't give theatrical rates. <laughs> well, I didn't mean it that way. I expect to pay the same price as anybody else. Eventually. <laughs> Mary. Ooh, that tooth throbbing again. Step right this way, please. Follow me. Can I come in, too? Yes, Mary. You stick right with me. Oh, uh, nurse, sterilize my mandibular injector and have the gutta percha ready. Yes, doctor. Now step into this chair, Mr. Benny, and I'll strap you in. 
strap me in. Yes, we don't want you squirming around. Oh. Would you like a manicure, Mr. Benny? <laughs> no, thanks. I just dropped in to have my tooth fixed. Oh, uh, yes, the tooth. Now, first, we must determine which one it is. Yes. Just a moment. Uh, hmm. Is it this one? No. Uh, this one? No. Is it this one? Yay! <laughs> That's the one, Doctor. It hurts something awful. We'll take care of that. Mmm, oh. this is a large cavity, and I'll have to fill it right away. Do you want gold or silver? I want cement. <laughs> oh, cement is no good, Mr. Benny. It wears out. Listen, Doctor, I've seen sidewalks around here for years, and they're holding up all right. <laughs> now, go ahead and fill it. Very well. I'll use cement, and then we'll all put our footprints in it. I'm not Grauman's Chinese. Furthermore, I don't want to bother filling this tooth. I want it pulled. All right, then perhaps I ought to give you an anesthetic. Perhaps nothing. Knock me out. Perhaps yet. Very well, we'll give you gas. Now, take it easy, Mr. Benny. Relax and breathe deeply. What are you going to do? Nurse, place the mask over his nose. Yes, doctor. Now, inhale slowly and you'll soon be in dreamland. Now, wait a minute, doctor. Wait a minute. Now, just relax. Bye-bye, Mr. Benny. Mary. Mary, where are you? Here I am, Jack. Mary, keep your eye on my money while I'm under the... <laughs> while I'm under the anesthetic. Okay. Which sock is it in? The right one. Hey, doctor, I don't think I want to... Nurse, hand me those clamps. So you are, doctor. Uh, I don't think and I... And that saliva ejector. Yes, doctor. I don't think I... I don't think... I... Ha, ha, ha. Well, as I live and brush my teeth with high pen, eh? If it isn't Benny and he's sleeping sounder than his audience on Sunday night. Mm. Oh, nurse, nurse. Yes, Dr. Allen. Hand me that chisel. I'm going to do this the hard way. Here you are, Dr. Allen. Thank you, Mrs. Day. Mrs. Day? Fred Allen? Where am I? Where am I? <laughs> The Jell-O program starring Phil Harris with Mary Livingston, Mahatma Gandhi, George Bernard Shaw, and yours truly, Lady Godiva. Hello <laughs> <laughs> oh. again. This is Jack Benny talking. Now hold on there, Benny. It's town hall tonight. What? <laughs> Why, Portland, what are you laughing at? Wait a minute, that's not Portland, that's Mary Livingston. Shut up, Carmichael. Carmichael? <laughs> Who's Carmichael? Oh, my goodness, look at this white fur all over me. The Jell-O program, starring Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with Scheherazade by Rimsky-Korsakov. That's a lie! <laughs> They'll never make it. <laughs> Let me, let me out of this chair. Now, here, hold still, Carmichael. I'm not Carmichael, I'm Jack Benny. Mrs. Day, hand me that crowbar. I'm not getting anywhere with this chisel. Crowbar? Let me out of here. Let me out of here. <laughs> oh, it's a good thing I got away from there. Where am I? What am I doing in this cage? Who's that coming toward me? Carmichael, your day is come. <laughs> what? I've been waiting a long time for this Rochester Rochester, what are you doing with that razor? Ain't no use backing away, Carmichael Winter's coming and Papa needs a fur coat <laughs> Look, Rochester, I'm not Carmichael This is me, your boss, Mr. Benny Mr. Benny? Yes, put down that razor I'll give you a new tuxedo I'll give you anything you want I'll give you a raise in salary Uh-uh, you ain't Mr. Benny <laughs> Rochester Carmichael, you're about to become a fond memory. Rochester, let go of me. Ain't no use scratching. Pull in those long claws. These aren't claws, Rochester. These are my fingernails. Would you like a manicure, Mr. Benny? <laughs> no, I'm just here to get my tooth pulled. Rochester, get away from me. What are you going to do? Carmichael, I'm going to carve you up and have you for a Thanksgiving dinner. 
Rochester, you don't even know when Thanksgiving is. Who does? <laughs> Now, Rochester, for the last time, get away from me. Hiya, Rochester. Look, there's Phil Harris. He'll tell you who I am. Hello, Philzy. Hiya, Carmichael. There's a fish for you. Ouch. <laughs> Phil, look at me. I'm not Carmichael. I'm Jack, your pal. Jack Benny, the actor. I'm sorry. We don't give theatrical rates. Doctor. <laughs> doctor. Hand me that hacksaw, Mrs. Day. We're coming along fine. Here you are, doctor. Thank you, Mrs. Day. I'm not Mrs. Day. I'm Carmichael. You are not. I'm Carmichael. <laughs> I mean, I'm Jack Benny. <laughs> Mary, what are you laughing at? How can I laugh? I'm a poached egg. <laughs> Mary, what are you talking about? Where are you? Oh, my tooth. Oh, Dr. Allen, you'll never get the tooth out that way. You'll have to use dynamite. Oh, dynamite is so messy, Mrs. Day. Hand me my machine gun. Machine gun? No, no. Now hold still, Benny. I want to make a nice, clean job of this. Please, Fred, please. You can't do this to me. I'm a polar bear. Don't you love animals? <laughs> Don't, Fred. Don't! <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, where am I? Where am I? It's all over, Mr. Benny. That didn't hurt now, did it? Hurt? Where's Fred Allen? Where's Harris? Wait till I get my hands on that rocket. Now, calm down, Mr. Benny. You were just dreaming. Dreaming? Oh, yes, you gave me gas, didn't you? I certainly did. And here's your tooth. It's a beauty, isn't it? My tooth? Yes. Do you mind if I keep it? I'm an elk, you know. <laughs> oh, that's perfectly all right. Well, I feel much better now. How much do I owe you, Doctor? That'll be $35. $35? Ooh! There he goes again, folks. Play, Phil. <laughs> Repeated by a popular request. In the language of radio and the theater, that means a hit. And it means a hit, too, when applied to some tasty dish that must be served again and again because of the whole family's enthusiasm for it. Such a dish, ladies and gentlemen, is pineapple strawberry whip, an exciting new jello dessert. For one thing, it's as easy as can be to make. Simply dissolve one package of fragrant strawberry jello in a pint of hot water. Then chill until cold and syrupy. Next, place it in a bowl of cracked ice or ice water and whip with a rotary egg beater until it becomes light and fluffy. And finally, just before molding it, fold in one cup of canned crushed pineapple. It's downright thrilling the way those golden tidbits of juicy pineapple complement the rich ruby goodness of strawberry jello. And you can bet that everybody will want this colorful, striking dessert repeated by popular request many times. So ask your grocer tomorrow for some strawberry jello. And tomorrow night, when the family gather around the dinner table, surprise them with a glorious bowl of Jell-O's new Pineapple Strawberry Whip. This is the last number of the sixth program of the new Jell-O series. And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Uh, before we say goodnight, I would like to remind you of the annual Red Cross Roll Call. Every citizen should join because your memberships are the sole support of the regular Red Cross program of fighting the suffering caused by disease, accident, and disaster. So may I urge you to join the Red Cross through your local Red Cross chapter. Good night, folks. J-E-L-L-O Here's news. Every Tuesday night, the Aldrich family is on the air, starring Ezra Stone as Henry Aldrich, that lovable hard luck kid. Consult your local newspaper or radio guide from time and stations, and be sure to tune in on the Aldrich family next Tuesday night. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>